Hello and welcome back to the Puncher's Chance podcast. In today's episode, we're going to be previewing the big matchroom show in Philadelphia. That includes Jaron Ennis, Bam Rodriguez, Amo Williams and more. Straight into the preview, straight into the big fight on the top of the bill. Jaron Ennis versus, as we were just talking about, Karen Chukadzian we're going for. Fought before. Did you know that? Um, <laughs> uh, fought before gonna be an interesting fight to see definitely didn't tell sam that they fought before no, did we, no. before pressing record i've just done my research boys it's, it's, it's good to we... see that jerome's back out boxing again in philadelphia in front of his home faithful last time against what was it avanesian back in july i thought he looked really really good that night and the crowd was brilliant and with this entire card they've put together i think the crowd's going to be even better and it's a rematch i think uh for a lot of people, they didn't realise that, Sam. Um, but the last fight they fought, Boots was a different class, winning all the score, winning all the rounds on all the judges' scorecards. But uh, the meeting again because the IBF gave Boots no other chance. Really, he had to fight Karen or not, and it's a it's a good fight. But I think for Boots now, it's all about winning this fight in style on Saturday night and getting on the microphone and just calling out all the other champions in his division. Yeah, he, he looked very impressive against Avanician, who was mm. a tough, tough fighter and has caused a lot of issues against other fighters, uh, like Josh Kelly, for example, you know, with the stoppage win he had over him. So it was, he looked really good in that. Obviously, the first fight between his two, he picked up every single round so the only way to really improve is by getting the stoppage which will hopefully what he'll be looking for on the weekend but yeah I think the what he needs now is big unification fights he's like I think that's the one thing we've lacked from there's a lot of good American fighters out there but and Ennis is right up there in terms of the best of them but we haven't quite seen him in massive unification fights with other, especially the American fighter, there's plenty of big fights out there for him. So if he can get through this one, I think 2025 will be the year. Matchroom hopefully get a massive American show and get him fighting for unification. Yeah. And you look at the names in the division, I thought Brian Norman Jr., that's the fight that I think Eddie wants to make. And I think that's the fight that really makes sense because I think if Boots gets through that then and he unifies the division, he can then move up. To 154 I want to say it is so there's big fights there and I think the fight he wants is Terence Crawford but I don't see that happening I don't think Bud would want to take that risk against someone who is very special in Jerome Ennis but there's other fighters it was quite funny on Saturday night the, this past Saturday Echo Esserman after his fight decided to uh, shout his name out so yeah. that could be a potentially that we get boots over in the UK with the zone with Queensbury now, who knows? But I just re- I like what they're doing in Philadelphia. You know, the Rocky and all that. They're now going back there. They're investing in it, and it's quite hard to sell out a Wells Fargo Centre. And he looks like he's done this quite easily this time around. Obviously, the undercard has helped that massively with Bam Rodriguez fighting on there. But yeah, it's just always good to see these future pound for pound stars boxing because there's something special about them. Yeah, I, I think you say that maybe the Terence Crawford fight doesn't happen, but. If you're Terence Crawford and those aren't the kind of fights you're taking at that point in your career, true, true. one of the pound for pound greats, unbeaten, a brilliant fire, had some huge wins. You're sort of thinking, well, these are the only real fights that are left for you. We don't really want to see tune up fights. We don't want to see, you know, fights against sort of champions that shouldn't really be champions, paper champions, things like this. We want big fights. And, you know, why not? If, if Jaron Ennis is able to get through this one, why not meet at Super Welter and, and make that fight happen? Um, I'd like to see it, uh, but you know who who knows. I think it's it's interesting that with this one, you obviously we're talking about the future fight to Jaron Ennis more so than this one, uh, because like you say, it was a a fight he had to take, and really it's about getting other world chat titles, about about moving up, about getting big fights. That's what is coming up for Jaron Ennis as opposed to you know defending your your IBF belt against someone you you've already beat. Yeah, that's what we want to see now is hopefully get through this one and the big fights in 2025, like the Crawford fight is like, yeah, like as fans looking at it, you, you think these fighters are like, why wouldn't you want to have those sort of fights in terms of the legacy you leave behind, the money they're going to make and 
you know, hopefully we can see a fight at that level for Boots and in Philadelphia as well. It's like like you said, it's a not just a boxing sort of place in America, but a massive sport in uh, sort of state in America. So they could make that a real one of the homes of boxing in America too. So yeah, I'd like to see that next year. He has to win in style though. Can we all agree that he has to stop? I think, he, well, he he I don't to. think he has to, but like that's the only way you improve on. Yeah, that's what the you've only way. That's the only is. way I see improvements in a boxer if he stops him now because he won every single round last time out. The next thing now is just to take your time with him and then take him out late on. I think that's what he's, that's what's going to happen. Yeah, I but think. we're talking about a guy with a twenty-four and two record. I know. We're not I talking know. about a yeah. bummer like a journeyman here, where you're like, oh, he's already fought this guy once. This is a this is a good quality fighter, top ten ranked fighter in his own right. But I think he needs to stop him. <laughs> Fair, you have higher standards than me. I'd be more than happy for him just to beat him again, pretty comfortably. I think, you know, to get a complete shutout against anyone is uh, is an impressive, thing. especially with boxing. There's so many like uh, varying factors. It can be one shot can change a fight. So I, I think if he doesn't, it's uh, understandable. But like you say, you know, if if you certainly if you want a a noted improvement on the last one, then yeah, he does mm-hmm. require a stoppage because it doesn't get any better than than winning all the rounds. I suppose you can get some 10-8 round wins or something and then do better but down on the card this card when you look at it I didn't even mention in the um, in the intro that Ray Ford's on the card as well but Bam Rodriguez obviously a, a brilliant fighter one of the, the the best of the rest in terms of the pound for pound picture I'd mm. say one of the the non multiweight champions you sort of go out he's in the in the picture as, as one of the best really impressive last time out against Estrada and looking to oppress again it seems he had to come off the canvas against Estrada didn't he for the first time in his career and <laughs> he made it look quite easy because when he came off the canvas he looked like he came back and made the round a 9-9 or something or a 8-9 uh, I really like watching Bam Rodriguez I think he's really really special and when you look at the pound for pound list he's potentially in the top 5 in my pound for, in my pound for pound list and he's only 24 as I well know, and he's got mental. a lot of time left and there's a lot more fights out there for him to make to become even one of even into the top three then even number one because everyone's calling for this a new a fight i think mm. that's the fight that everyone wants to see bam rodriguez in but he's in and with a decent opponent on saturday night and i'm expecting just to see another clinical performance by him because last time out against estrada he looked really really good and i'm expecting him to go up another level a bit like boots now make a statement it's all about making statements. When you have fighters in the opposite corner, it's all about making a statement to the rest of the people in the in the division and then a potential unification fight or even just rolling the dice and going over to Japan and boxing, for some people, the pound-for-pound pound number one in Inoue. I don't know if I have an interest in that Inoue fight. For really? It. Well, I just, it's a great fight. I want to see great fights and two great fighters fight each other, but not necessarily one fighter jump up two weight classes... Mm. just to make that way and then not be the best version of themselves you want the best version of Bam Rodriguez against the best version of Inoue and if that's not possible I don't necessarily see the point in forcing it to happen I don't know I just think we've seen so many great fights recently that, uh, yeah maybe being a little bit we're greedy all, we're, <laughs> all, we're all desperate to see these great big fights and it, it was kind of the same with um, with Canelo Crawford it's like okay two brilliant pound for pound stars of their generations but they're quite, there's quite a big size difference and it's like I don't know if we need to force it just just to see it do you know what I mean yeah he's such a good fighter and I don't think anyone of that weight class beats him obviously the Estrada fight he had to come through some the knockdown and mm. pick up the win there against Sonny Edwards the win Sonny Edwards is probably one of the best fighters to come out of Britain and like he looked really good in that fight to cause Sonny a lot of issues maybe jump the good story there would be obviously Sonny's brother is a weight class above Bam Rodriguez so instead of jumping up two weight classes you could go up one and fight Charlie because I know Charlie wants to fight for world titles as well to, so to have Bam Rodriguez against Charlie Edwards is a fight you could sell possibly but yeah I think until he starts moving up in weight classes you won't see anyone that touches him I don't think I also think, you know, with that Inoue fight, Inoue's probably a couple fights away from featherweight, you'd imagine. He's, he's probably knocking closer to featherweight than he is um, bantamweight. So to, to for, for Bam Rodriguez to effectively fight a featherweight to come up from it, it's a tough ask, isn't it? But with... Did you boys see a picture this week? Who was Inoue pictured with? 
uh, to Kelly Shake. Shake. Yeah, Rio anything's season. possible. So New Rio just keep that in mind. Ambassador. Um, down slightly further on the card, like I mentioned, Ray Ford against Orlando Gonzalez. Um, obviously, Ray Ford coming off the back of that um, that close Nick Ball fight um, and and a, a spectacular last mi- last round, last moment um, knockout. The one before that is this a sort of reset for for Ray Ford after a couple of big big fights, just kind of getting back level, getting back confident, and then look to push him back towards those titles again. Yeah, I think. Well, the Nick Ball fight it was. A really good fight, very close. Some people had Ford winning it, or I think he might feel a bit hard done by. It. He's lost his title as well, but he'll uh, obviously push. Want to push in twenty twenty five now to get a title back. Or Sharky Foster, obviously the one, the uh, won his belt last mm. week. Like that's a potential fight. The two American fighters go against each other. So yeah, I think twenty twenty obviously get the win this weekend, rebuild a bit of confidence from taking his first career loss and then try and push and win and win, win world titles again and I d dunno, has he gone up a weight class now since that loss to Nick Ball or is he still Um I'm not actually sure actually what the, let me have a quick look what this fight is uh is meant to be fought at 'cause I it is gonna be fought at Super Feather. Super fair. That was, that, that's the same as what they fought yeah. last time. But yeah, I think uh, it's no, it's not. Is it? It's one up from Ball. oh, Ball's yeah. a featherweight, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's gone up. Has he? So he's gone up. He's gone up to super featherweight. Um, so in terms of champs at that sort of weight, you're looking at Anto Kachachi, Lamont Roach, mm. but he's moved up to fight uh, Tank Davis next. Um, so there's there's certainly movement in terms of champions, and I think Kachachi's probably closer to moving up to. Uh, up to, to lightweight than, than staying at super featherweight so it might be it might be a, a case of right place right time for Ray Ford that he can then kind of move up and and clean up a little bit of that division where it's been uh, it's been vacated somewhat it's all about the rebuild now ain't it whenever someone suffers a, a first career loss it's all about how they respond from it and he has to respond good on Saturday night and I expect in incredible fashion but a lot of people had him winning that Nick Ball fight which personally did as well but it when you lose a fight that, that that's close it's not there's not a lot of mental scarring from it I don't think because I think Nick Ball uh, Nick Ball Ray Ford it might have knocked his confidence a little bit but not a lot if you get what I mean there yeah it wasn't as if he was beaten he was heavily, battered, no, was no exactly but he can have in the back of his mind that Kolmatov fight still for me one of the best moments in 2024 was there was what seconds left on the clock in the 12th and final round and he had to knock him out and he did just like I said that's the best moment for me in 2024 right there but now to come back a step and to get your opponent in front of you on Saturday night get through him you back you put yourself back into it because for me Ray Ford shouldn't be fighting people that He's, he knows he's going to beat. He needs to be in competitive fights because he's he's he is really good. I think he's one of the best American boxers that they've got over in the States. So I expect him to have a good performance. But it's another rebuilding card in a way for Ammo, ain't it? Ammo's yeah, also on the card in an that, eight-rounder. Yeah. He, unlike Ford, I want to say this politely, he did get a little bit battered with the Hamza Shiraz fight. He got battered by Shiraz. But I don't, yeah. I don't think there's any bad yeah, thing but he there's no start against Shiraz. Yeah. He caused them issues early on. But but then he got... Maybe that's a little bit tough. Maybe that's why that he's only doing an eight-rounder. Um, but like I said, it's just great to see these guys back out and it's just all about rebuilding themselves, finding themselves again and getting that confidence back to then mo- go back potentially over to Saudi Arabia and fight in all these guys again in 50-50 fights which we want to see all these boxers in No, I think Williams he was going into that Shiraz fight as the favourite for many people I think like that was Shiraz's first real tough test and I what well, it's a potential one I think you could see again in the future and to, once Shiraz has picked up a world title and Williams has probably worked his way back to a world title them two again in a rematch would be a really good fight and obviously Arm will look to avenge that loss but yeah it's just a rebuild period now for him Ford like coming off those 5v5 losses and yeah 2025 will be where they'll look to push on and 
get the world title fights again. Yeah, this is what this is all about, isn't it? It's, it's not that you can roll the dice, you can have a big fight and it's not over for you. You can still build back up to it. That's what we're kind of seeing and, and trying to get back into boxing uh, sort of post uh, Floyd Mayweather where it was like, oh, if, if you get one loss, you are, you're finished, you're a washed fighter, time to retire. Like, it's not, that's not the way it is. Yeah, boxing's you, changed again. You can, you, can lose a, you can lose a good fight and, and, still, uh, and still be a top fighter. Um, the last one on this card I want to just quickly talk about before we probably move on to maybe one other fight and then the predictions is Cali Co as well uh, light heavyweight American really good amateur record um, I think he there's a, I forget the guy's name which is really stupid now because this makes it but there's a two time um, Olympic gold medalist that he was the only one to stop I think as, a, as an amateur um, comes in as, as a pro he's got the W the um, American light heavyweight yeah. t- title so one that Matchroom have signed clearly to, to get up to that and I just the light heavyweight division as we've said so many times is such a stacked division such a difficult division to break into that world level at um, and he's an interesting one that maybe we can see matched up with one of those big fighters uh, you know a, a sort of Joshua Boazzi level fighter at some point um, soon certainly one to keep an eye on it's definitely an argument to say that potentially the light heavyweight division is one of the best divisions in boxing at the moment domestically for us over here in the UK I think it, it's the number one Even, alongside the yeah. cruiserweight division when you, when you look at it on here well what better be Ev Bivol Benavidez Boazzi mm. all the bees um, <laughs> Callum Smith Vodjic Yard you know all the way up there's so many Willie Hutchinson there's a lot of really top fighters and because better be Ev and Bivol just have that division on, on hold at the moment there's so many phenomenal fighters that don't even have themselves a world title and you're thinking how I mean Dimitri Bivol does not have himself a world title which is you know like we said before completely obscene to say so yeah I I think there's an argument for it mm. not necessarily, necessarily the most exciting division in boxing but probably the one of the highest level divisions in boxing certainly I, I think America sort of sort of looking for that next like star in the bigger weight classes like light heavyweight heavyweight since Wilder sort of gone off the boil and it's probably Jar- not Anderson yeah, yeah. Jared Anderson they were pinning their ropes yeah. on he got battered by Bacoli so yeah I think they'll they're in need of uh, like an American heavyweight or light heavyweight a big guy to sort of be a poster boy for American boxing as well so yeah have you, have you watched that Bacoli Aronson fight back since I keep I think it's Bacoli Steve's put keeps putting it up on Twitter it, the knockouts in that are incredible incredible like we said when the fight was announced we were thinking why the hell are they putting Anderson in with Bacoli hmm. Riyad season that's the only reason why they looked at the money and just went yeah we're gonna take that fight it was a massive risk and it and it didn't pay off did it no but Cody now you look at where he's going man he's heavyweight division he's the man, man that's gonna be everyone's gonna be like oh, I don't wanna fight I don't wanna touch him no <laughs> well still nobody's talking <laughs> go about away, him go away please you know him between him and um, his trainer I follow on Twitter they, they are every day mm. talking about a fight getting a fight making a fight happen and it just never ever like no one seems to ever mention Bacoli's name can you imagine him and Zhang just both men that oh, just swing and oh. well the other thing that was talked about recently was obviously it was the 50 year anniversary of the rumble in the jungle um and um i think uh turkey ala sheikh was tweeting about the possibility of making making that happen on the 50th anniversary so it could be you know aj versus bacoli in africa Imagine, to, yeah. to commemorate 50 years of rumble in the jungle that would be a fight to watch it wouldn't um, be against her why not? Would not be again, especially being in Africa as well. I think Africa I deserves I'd, uh, something. Be fancy and AJ to get through our either after the Dubois fight. Mm. But so what? If he's not going to get the Dubois rematch, you might as well just you know have a huge fight for the fans, huge fight for himself. Oh, yeah, it'll be um, a great fight to watch. He's already been world champion, so just yeah, a couple times. Yeah. <laughs> done all right. Just, just roll the dice again, and yeah, I think that'd be incredible if they did that in Africa. You saw how big that Rumble in the Jungle was when they did it before imagine that doing it now oh, it'd be chaos it'd be, it'd be incredible but it'd be, it'd be great to see Bacoli get a world title shot he deserves e- it even if it's just Bacoli having a homecoming in his country that would be just incredible as well wouldn't it? it doesn't have to be a big fight it can be a fight against someone he can beat but just seeing him fight in Africa I just want to see a big fight night in Africa because I think their fans are highly underrated because I think they're very passionate because I watched a documentary the other day on in Ghana different sport I know but the fans they're so passionate about their own and 
yeah, I think it's inevitable now that Bacoli fights over in... Is it? Will it be Congo, or do you reckon they would get it in Nigeria? Or... Um, I think it would be... Well, it would be nice for it to be in the Congo for mm-hmm. obvious reasons, but if it is AJ against yeah, Bacoli, Nigeria. you would you would imagine they'd do it in like the National Stadium in Lagos, in, in Abuja. So, yeah, it would be nice to see it in Nigeria. It would be nice to see it in the Congo for obvious reasons, but either way, I think... Africa a big because especially now with the Riyadh season event being in Saudi Arabia the the big thing with those Riyadh seasons not as many people travel to those events to watch them in person it's not so much it's a lot more about the sort of TV production the so with that in mind there's no reason why you couldn't put on an event in Africa and and you don't need thousands of British fans to travel over there to make it a big event you know mm. you can have the TV coverage the the media week etc to be the the selling point but we've been slightly digressed from uh, <laughs> from the from the mission so Keyshawn Davis as well fighting uh, Gustavo um, Daniel Lemos any ideas who he's he's, he's uh, beaten in his career Harry <laughs> no, anyone no. name comes to mind um, no I'm only joking ha- oh, but Welsh boxing fans might know him because he uh, he beat Lee Selby in the fight just after Josh Warrington wasn't it it was the fight yeah, after his last fight yeah, his last fight in his in career Aires, yeah. um and so a, a top fighter that, that's never seen a, a world title it, himself, but he's held the uh, the Latino title and fighting against Keyshawn Davis, a top fighter, should give him a good test. He's a he's the epitome of a of a t- tough Argentinian, isn't he? Yeah, definitely. I think this fight for me is very very interesting because I think in his last fight, Lemos against uh, Richardson Hitchens looked really good, caused him some problems um, over in Vegas. This fight now for Keyshawn Davis, he's is he? I, I want to say he's eleven and zero, Amy. Yeah, yeah eleven and zero. Yeah. So it's all about defending this title, and you you get through him, and like you said, he's a tough Argentinian. You know what you get when you face an Argentinian; they're going to be durable. They're not going to be easily. You're not going to get through them easily. They're going to be tough. And after that performance that Lemos had against Hitchens, he's going to be coming in with to this fight against Davis with a lot of confidence, and he's going to be like, well. You're gonna if you want to beat me, mate. You have to work hard, and it could be a potential banana skin for me. Mm-hmm. It's a it's a big step up against a fight that's only ever lost that one fight to Richardson Hitchin. So if he can get a win, especially if he could manage a stoppage win, mm. then it'd be quite impressive and really push him in terms of the eyes that'll be on him. But it's a good card again as well in terms of American fighters. You've got obviously the Davis brother brothers uh, Kelvin Davis is 13 and all uh, Keon Davis making his debut we've got Troy Isley who's unbeaten American fighter as well so there's, there's so many good fighters out in America that are coming through so Abdullah Mason as well on this yeah. card 20 years old 20 year old 19 20 undefeated it, one of the best prospects coming through America at the moment I think and mm. he's definitely one if you are going to be watching and make sure you catch his fight because he is something special fair enough Jump straight over the to predictions. The predictions are, I We're going to be doing um, Ennis versus I did it for the other one. Kadzian, uh two as it is. It is on the Boxing News app. Um, it's mental that it's a rematch, ain't it? Yeah, it's, you'd, you'd wouldn't think it's of an the, interesting one. So down at the bottom, uh, Amo oh. Williams middleweight, eight rounder versus Jan Garrido. I'll kick this one off. I'm going for a Williams stoppage on this one. Contrary to the the popular result on the on the Boxing News app, I'll go for a stoppage on this one. Ooh. What are you think, boys? Williams points. I'll go Williams stoppage as well. Hopefully, he can make a bounce back. It's only eight rounds, but who won last weekend as well? I'm... You was it you me? Did. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> okay. you got the exact rounds because it was thirty-two rounds. All three went the distance. Bloody so. hell, come on. Um, yes. So um, I, won't, I won't win it this weekend after my first prediction. But I was going to say as well. That's a that's that's a that's a that's a ball. That's a paper champion victory. That yeah. winning on the rounds. They never count. I'm sure I said that when I won on the rounds that they didn't count at all. Um, Ernest Mercado, Jason Saracho, super lightweight 10 rounder. Uh, what are you going for this one, Ben? We'll go Ben first. Um, Weren't expecting that, were you? He's panicking no. now. Mercado, stoppage. I'm just going stoppage. I always think Mexican fighters who never stop him, but he's got 94% knockout rate, so... Can't, I'll can't disagree with, with that. Stoppage. Mercado stoppage, yeah. Yeah, I've gone for the same though. I don't think it'll be. An, he's, he's got a tough fight actually. The other guy. There's rounds in this has, fight. Has, yeah. has 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 a high knockout rate as well. You know, 14 wins. You don't get that by accident. So that'll be an interesting one to see. Uh, Calico versus Gallegos. 
Um, Gallegos is a lot of fights. 23, only one loss. Oh, it's two losses and a draw. I'm going for a co-decision on this one across 10 rounds. Yeah, I've gone co-decision as well. Co-stoppage. <laughs> Ooh. I <laughs> hate that I've gone different. Classically gone different. Um, Ray Ford, Orlando Gonzalez, super featherweight. 10 rounder, Harry, what are you going for for this Ford one? Ford stoppage. Another stoppage. He loves it. I love, it. I love an early going. night. You you've know. gone from you've gone from no stoppages <laughs> last weekend to just nothing but stoppages this I one. I want an early night. Uh, yeah. I've gone forward points decision. I same for me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're on the same at the moment, aren't we? I think. Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, there goes me winning this week. So, so uh, Bam Rodriguez, Pedro Guevara, super flyweight twelve rounder. Where are we going? Stoppage for Bam. Late. <laughs> I've gone bam by points. I've got a bam stoppage on this one, so there will be a winner. Um, will it be Harry? Uh, who knows? But um, yeah, bam stoppage on that one. And then um, Jaron Arias, Karen Trukadzian, the main event, number two. You know what? You, Harry's laid his gauntlet out I've earlier in the episode. Said my prediction. Are you going for that as your prediction? Yeah. Fair enough. Stoppage. What about you, Ben? <laughs> I've gone boots by points. I've gone boots points. Oh, you boys are boring. Knocking out a Ukrainian is a is a is a, is a vague is a brave shout that uh, not many mm. people uh, are brave enough to make, and I'm not brave enough to make. Uh, quick look at the rounds: 20, 32. Call it. Oh, I didn't count my rounds. I just submitted. We'll call it. Oh, 58 pence to one. Is that your odds? Yeah. Um, but a lot of them have got win just win fight do you know what really does my head in when you get this, my odds are 583 to 80 just round it down <laughs> we don't have to do this it's about 8 just give me 8 um, ah well never mind um, that pretty much wraps up for another episode next week big week for the uh, for the channel and for, for boxing in general we've yeah. obviously got everyone's favourite boxer Jake Paul fighting uh, so stick around for our very fair reasonable well thought of preview of that fight um, as well as it being our one year anniversary next week so if you have been listening and you haven't subscribed already then we're we're on one year we're on 63 episodes it's our 63rd so 64 will be our one year 64 in a year and interviews and shorts why haven't you subscribed yet it's all on there Um, and also we got the Welsh uh, Media Awards dinner on the Friday we've mentioned it a couple times nothing anyone could do to help us win um, but just by subscribing, you're Fingers helping crossed. us massively anyway. So. <laughs> Is that what we're going yeah. for? Is that technically lying, though? Are we technically no. extorting our fans Just to... Just boosting uh, our egos if you... Uh, yeah. 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 And that, that will... the Our confidence will rub off on the judges. They go, oh, <laughs> these guys know they've won. Um, you know, you look at 550 subscribers, Mental. that's not a winning number. Thank 551, yeah. that is a winning number. So uh, subscribe and down if below. if you look at next weekend as well, it's just a brilliant weekend of boxing. Apart from Jake Paul, Mike Tyson will ignore that. We got Latino night. Yeah. Um, oh, the fight night's just gone. We're from down break. in the. You're down in the Vale, yeah. The Vale. I, I'm in France, so <laughs> we we. But uh, there we go. Fair enough. It's a great week for boxing. It's been a great year for boxing. Thank you all for listening. Spotify for the audio episodes. Instagram for shorts and reels. Twitter for matchups, all sorts. Facebook for some stuff. LinkedIn, don't bother. We'll catch you all next week. Thank you all for listening. <laughs> Punches chance. Punches chance podcast.